Hey, good night, Galleon. Uh, good night, listen to me. Good evening. This is uh, Mayor Tom O'Leary uh, back on a Monday night. Uh, have a few new things to talk about, and I'm sure an abundance of questions. Uh, first thing I wanted to do is go back and clarify some comments that were made last week, uh, jestfully, but um, they relate to the, the city cleanup program. So let me clarify there is going to be a cleanup program on the 22nd of May, and its uh, exact uh, limits we're still working on. One of the things that helps uh, make for a big, a bigger, and uh, probably um, impact more of the homes that maybe need the most cleanup, particularly ones that have elderly folks um, that that uh, live there, is if we can get a community partner, either a nonprofit um, or uh, in in the past when we've done it, it's been real successful. We've had, we've uh, we as the city have partnered up with a with a congregation, and so we're going to begin to uh, contact with the ministerial community, see if there's anyone interested in, in um, having their youth group or one of their adult groups um, help with uh, some of the home-based uh, cleanup. Lacking that, we'll probably have a, a, essentially a drop-off site uh, on the 22nd. So. Um, you know, I, if I conveyed, I, I don't really love the program, but I'll be there and uh, and we'll get it done. You know, I think everyone or many people who have utilized the program in the past um, <clears throat> recognize we didn't do it last year. And so I imagine there are some, some garages or some extra rooms or wherever uh, people store their stuff, their old couches and, and mattresses and, and such. So we'll be open on the 22nd. That also happens to be the weekend that Taylor Road's open. So if you happen to have a bunch of energy or you're lucky enough to have a youth group or lucky enough to have a neighbor kid uh, come over and uh, assist you, you can get rid of some of that yard rubbish uh, as well as the, the broken down. Uh, did we do appliances last year? In 2019? Yeah. No. No. All right. Well, we won't take your appliances. We'll direct you over to uh, to Kurtzman's most likely. But uh, a lot of furniture, a lot of mattresses. So, yep, we'll be in that business. So if, to the extent I offended, um, you know, it's probably never outgrow it. When you're a kid, you leave the house. Mom always tells you, you know, make sure you do this at school or whatever. So before not mom, but my wife said, before you do anything else tonight, do two things, smile. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to do. And then the other thing was, please address that issue because I must have upset somebody. She had read on Facebook that I, that uh, we probably weren't going to do it because the mayor had a bad attitude about it. So anyways I really have a great attitude about it now and, and I will assist other people on the 22nd it um, you know by the way it's not we it's all volunteer work the, what we've done in the past is between the health department who assess who assists financially with a mosquito grant uh, that helps with the um, with tires um, and um, and mayor's office staff so I you mean know, certainly we'll take any other volunteers make sure you have your workers comp covered but anyway just wanted to touch on that I don't want to belabor it the other thing she said was don't go on and on as much tonight so we'll stop there um, not sure if there are any questions yet a grocery question already uh, yeah that's question number two tonight all right let's do question number one because I can't wait to, I can wait to question number two Right. Okay, um, first question tonight came from Tom. He said, um, referring back to Wednesday night's uh, Streets and Alleys Committee meeting, yeah. is there a plan to rebuild South Street from Harding Way to Dawson? Uh, rebuild it? No, I, I, gosh, we paid sections of that. I think what we didn't do, uh, as I recollect, uh, Tom, is we didn't do Dawson to... Um, city limits so we, we can probably check that while we're still on there I'm not sure but the uh, yeah that first section 
Matt's going to check here while we do that. My memory is that we did uh, up to Atwood one year, and then from Atwood over to um, Dawson another year. But you know, we may have stopped at Wood Street, Tom. So, South Street, it's on the radar. And so if I'm fumbling this bad, there isn't an immediate plan. And uh, just back to that committee meeting, I think what's going on this week is the committee's kind of out driving those uh, streets and assessing those, maybe measuring them up against South Street now that it's been mentioned. So I, I would, um, the best way if you're on, if you live on one of those target streets or use, use it a lot, the best thing to do is keep an eye out for the ordinance uh, that will list all the streets and the estimated cost. That's, um, I suspect it's not until um, the first meeting in April. I don't think you're going to see that um, either uh, next week or the week after. It will, it will as the earliest you'll see that ordinance is early April. So there's a chance to get in and offer up any other candidates. You see it on there? Not yet. Yeah, it's been a while. So. Um, I guess, Tom, the best thing we'll do is we'll try to post sort of a paving history the last few years on South Street. I could be the most embarrassed mayor in Galliot. Uh, but I think we've done sections of it. We'll check on it. Okay. Now, question number two. <laughs> yes. Uh, this one came from Cindy. She mm -hmm. said, is there any confirmation on the sale of the former Geyer's store? No, I don't no, I do understand, um, see, this is two weeks old, this information. And that uh, is that um, county development uh, office contacted them, see if they need any assistance. I think a lot of people, it's funny, if all you got to do is dress up in a suit and sort of walk around out there and you can really create quite a buzz. But there were a handful of what they, you know, some people call suits out there right at the end of February, early March. The word back to us uh, uh, through the, through the uh, development partnership is um, that they're as close as they've been uh, since Geyer shut down. So they're working on a tenant uh, that was described as closer than um, the previous market. And heck, if you remember, uh, Cindy, that, that got so far as the, the, uh, they had applied for and got the liquor permit in the name of the store. Uh, and then that thing just kind of just didn't congeal. So no jello up there on that deal, but it looks like something's coming around on, um, on another project. You'll be the you know, we'll get the word out as fast as we can. At this point, we don't know much about it, so we'll just applaud like everyone else. So that's what I got on that. I'm 0 for 2 now. Didn't have a good answer for Tom, and I didn't have exactly the answer yet uh, for Cindy. It looks like at this point, just add one more thing, that for months, six months or so, after Geyer shut down, we are getting hammered a little bit for allowing them to rent up electric bill and those kinds of things. And, uh, you know, we're trying to keep the store open. Um, and, 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 and in those days, my argument was, and maybe it turned out to be true, let the private sector, it's going to work its way out. There's more of an interest in grocers doing business in Galleon. Um, you know, there's 10,000 people here. And, um, the, and, a, and a greater interest in the landlord to get that, uh, that anchor tenant. So maybe that sorts out. Maybe the role of government is, um, you know, I'd sure like to think it's not necessary every time a community need is identified. We can always help, but we don't, should not be the government, and especially local city government, um, funding every type of project. We should be trying to help uh, things move along. So anyway, enough on that. Let's keep our fingers crossed. I do have some information about South Street. Last time we paved that section was 2018, mm -hmm. and it looks like we did go down to Wood Street. 
Um, and then uh, Tom had a kind of a clarification. He's yeah. referring to the section where the larger trucks are destroying the pavement. Yeah, that's, you know, the, I, uh, that's really true. Um, uh, hmm. Kind of a double-edged sword, though. Uh, I think that the Ironworks building with the Kurtzman operation in there, and the others, I think there's two or three businesses in there, maybe four, uh, is um, really good for the city. There's one industry in particular that is, um, they kind of give everyone headaches, and they're the ones with the big trucks the don't have tarps on them, some of the debris bounces out of them. Uh, it's been known to uh, uh, get uh, impaled on people's tires. So I guess what happened on that, Tom, is that uh, we got to Wood Street, and the estimate to replace that area that you say, that, and you're right, the trucks have beat up. Heck, they beat the. It, They've been beating it up for many, many years, but that estimate to repair that is is was pretty sizable. Well, I'll go back and can't probably do this on the fly and go back and see what that was estimated at. I think we we went to Wood Street because going all the way to Dawson was while it was logical, it was to a budget buster. And then whether I was just commenting about government, some of its tendencies, then kind of like government, you declare victory. Heck, we got all the way to Wood Street. You know, what are people complaining about? So it may be lost focus, but I'll, I'll go back and check. I'm, I'm almost certain that, well, that that estimate was, oh, crap. One of those, we could do three other streets for the kind of repair that we found in just a, and I don't, I know we didn't core that street. Uh, we just could tell by a by the way it was falling apart that there were major subsurface repairs. So that's a pretty detailed, uh, long excuse or explanation. So it must be I must not be making it up. But we'll take a look at that, Tom. That's a it is pretty crappy there, and there's a lot of traffic. You know the other thing that happened. Here I go. My wife said, "Don't do this." Uh, you remember for a few years when we had a real high volume of uh, truck traffic out there. It wasn't the, the uh, recyclers that drive us crazy these days on a daily basis, but it was out in the HTI building, that next gen warehouse. Oh my golly, there hadn't been truck. Heck, there weren't that many trucks back in the heyday of the ironworks. There were a lot of cars and uh, other good things, but anyway, a lot of traffic in, in those years, it really took a beating. And so, so yeah, it was 18. It's time to sort of redirect our energy to it, see if if it can be added. But but uh, we'll finish up on that, close the loop and stuff, and let you know how much that was estimated. And that may give you an idea. Although it's really crappy, that's that's kind of why. You probably really made him mad, Matt, when Wood Street was on the, was on the paving list this year. Not that we're trying to make him mad, but if you notice that Wood Street, where we stopped on South, where the, the proposal was to pave that, it's not in particularly good shape. But, yep, good point. Done dwelling on it. We'll get you the numbers. I'm almost certain it was just so expensive that we, that we um, blew it off. Is that a, you allowed to use that word? Yeah. Okay. I'm probably on a, on a mission to fight back against canceling, so I don't want to be offensive, but we probably just lost focus. So next question. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, that is actually all I have for right now. Okay. Uh, I want to take a few minutes, and um, if I haven't alienated everyone with those two wonderful answers, and go into what I expect to be sort of important meetings the next two nights. There's uh, tomorrow night's Economic Development Committee, uh, after which a Committee of the Whole uh, has been attached. What's a, what's a Committee of a Whole? Its main purpose in this situation is to allow members of council who aren't on the Economic Development Committee 
to ask their questions uh, that they they have or they they've uh, got from uh, feedback from others about the free Senate. So tomorrow night, the purpose is to try to go through, if you will, a sources and uses of the funds uh, that would be required to build the building, and I think for if things go well, a discussion about how the infrastructure will be built. So, um, you know, quite honestly, it's been a month or so. I can't uh, have trouble remembering at which committee meeting of Economic Development Committee uh, this was first um, the idea of uh, the $5 million bond issue was first proposed. But it's been a month or so. There's been a lot of discussion about which you're either real involved or sort of involved or don't know anything about. So I'm not going to try to do the full education thing, but there's been quite a discussion. There's also been quite a bit of work, honestly, on filling in some of the initial gaps. Uh, uh, things like if the building is going to cost many more million than the five million that the Freeze Foundation will make a commitment, where's the rest of the money coming from? And while I think I think everybody who's engaged with this will have an opinion about how rock solid or, or squishy some of those uh, uh, estimated sources of funds are. I think it's uh, come quite a long ways and uh, I hope one of the things that happens is a little sharing about uh, potential additional use of state funds, how they can be used to close this gap a little bit. And, and uh, at the end of the discussion, a better idea really uh, in the minds of council members about how real this is and how, um, how much a uh, part of it that city council wants to, um, you know, to, to play in, in getting it accomplished. So it's uh, pivotal is a maybe overused word, but it's the city council's role in this is pivotal to, they're going to need to pass along the request from the uh, Port Authority uh, to the Freeze Foundation and that next step is kind of what council needs to do is to decide um, how and whether uh, they want to support uh, the project. So anyways, I'll stop there. That's Tuesday night. Wednesday, there's some, uh, there'll probably be a half hour, maybe, maybe a little longer of regular finance committee stuff before Wednesday night's meeting, which is, I think the best we can hope for on that is um, an overview of the, um, a proposed pro forma. I wouldn't describe it as the pro forma, but a proposed pro forma, and uh, hopefully a discussion um, and I think that's important because it gets into the questions about who's going to run this thing. And also a lot of the skeptics' questions about, well, what if this thing doesn't work? You know, who's going to pay the bills? Those sorts of questions. So um, I, think, I think that will be uh, most likely more fleshing out some of the questions. I think the right answer for, I don't know, half the questions or third of the questions on Wednesday will be, that's a good question and we're still working on that answer. So um, I really expect Tuesday to have most of the pieces put together in terms of how the funds would be raised, any debt would be serviced on the capital and infrastructure side, and then uh, Wednesday more of a discussion about how it's going to be operated, whether other models, whether it's Coshocton or Sandusky um, or, um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank on some of the other private models that are out there, uh, we know whether ours would operate um, like galleons or would it operate similar to some of the other facilities that have been relatively successful, successful in the sense they're still open and, and serving kids and, and, and all that good stuff. So. That's Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, tune in at 7 on Wednesday. I think there'll be some good finance stuff. The committee stuff on Tuesday, uh, it probably won't set your seat on fire, but Wednesday's 
finance stuff, there's some interesting things that will be, that'll be talked about there. Um, as we sort of move ahead in, in, uh, in terms of adjusting the budget, there's also some adjustments to what will be happening with uh, COVID dollars and looking ahead a little bit to what, what we may talk a little bit about. Um, the Relief Act, I think is what they're calling it, the new money that is promised to be coming our way. So, anyways, that's Wednesday. Looks like you may have a question or two. We'll yep. go do uh, that for a while. Yep, uh, referring to the Free Center, Curtis yeah. asked, uh, why spend money on a building and hopes and dreams instead of fixing the roads where businesses are, that are actually in this town? Well, the, the roads, I get the point, and I don't want to pick on Curtis because that's a legitimate question. But the there's two questions, there's two issues here. One, the freeze funds are limited for recreational purposes. That's what the will is. That's how the and the will, as we're learning as we're going along, isn't as important as the trust document, the probate document that both the city and the freeze foundation have uh, have agreed to. So our distribution uh, really needs to go to park recreation. And each year our projects, the Freeze Foundation reviews those projects to see if they meet the intent of the will and, and, um, and Mr. Freeze's purpose. Long way of saying we really can't use it for street paving. Uh, and so, so that's one thing I wanted to say. The other, I'm not sure I'm, I'm, the, I'm as grumpy as anyone about the condition of streets, especially this time of year. I'd say a couple things. Our intersections are worse than the main line. We've gotten, but we're going to have to pave some of the intersections where we have a lot of, of uh, wear and tear. But as far as the we're paving the streets where the businesses are, I don't know what I... I I'm not going to buy into that one, Curtis. I'm, we got through, like, Harding Way's in really good shape, and we should all be proud of that, and that provides a real nice platform uh, for the for a large part of our business community. And and Curtis is probably going to hate me. Call back this summer, late fall, when, we, when Portland Way starts to be under construction and complain about how you can't get to those businesses. Big project uh, starting this year, all of the rest of this year into next year, probably till the fall of 22. Uh, it's going to be the reconstruction uh, and widening of Portland Way, where I, th I think that's probably about 90% of the businesses. Tom's point on South Street, point's well taken, but you start looking at... So anyways, where the businesses are, we're doing better than some of the residential areas and some of those intersections, so... I beg to disagree, but send in another question. Maybe I misinterpreted what you're saying, but can't use freeze dollars for anything but parks. So the battle is maintain uh, the discussion is maintaining existing parks and adding a little bit each year, uh, so we have a really uh, even cooler parks um, a system. Uh, or putting a whole lot of those freeze. Uh, Freeze Foundation eggs in one big basket and uh, hoping that that large uh, investment of public funds uh, pays off, you know, not only for the, for the public, um, but maybe for some upside business development. Heck, I'm, I'm a fan of the project and keep been doing this, been fighting, oh, man, nah, fighting is the wrong word, been trying to make this happen six, seven years. And my motivation is for Galleon area folks. Mostly, there's a question that was asked in the survey, I was reading those today. Uh, is this facility for just for athletes and their families? And I think I know what that means. It's like, and the answer is no. I mean, you can be a mostly sedentary, mostly hang out, and most of your recreation is with your thumbs. And it's still for you if you decide to do a little bit of, um, of um, you know, easy recreation. I see a lot of people 
I was, I'm going to brag about the bike path. See a lot of people out on the bike path. And um, that's not for athletes. Heck, it's not even for bikes. I think it's for dogs and families and kids. So what I see out at the free center is not just for athletes. I see is a is a rec center that can add to what the Y does and do it in a way that uh, maybe provides more um, non-membership recreational stuff. So, anyways, that's why uh, it's it. Uh, you know, people who say we've got streets, we've got other problems that need addressed. I agree with that, but and we're we're plugging away at that. Um, maybe not everyone's satisfaction, but anyways, can't use the freeze fund for anything but parks, maintenance of the parks, adding to the parks, and so we'll keep on down the road. I would say, any more questions? Um, I have a compliment for us. No, that's impossible. I must have sent that to the wrong... No, go ahead. What do we got? Uh, this one came from Greg. He said, kudos to the city workers who graded the drive going back to this this golf course out of the reservoir. Yeah, we didn't have anything to do with that. I think they were just wandering around out there, so we'll take the compliment, pass it on, but thanks. That's, uh, that just, that... Um, I don't want to decide. Thank you for the compliment. It... it it gets to this issue of the more nice things we have in terms of our park. I was thinking about a city just the other day I was over there, so it's nearby. And they have one park. They got a couple of other parks. But ah come on. You know, so I think one of the things we don't appreciate as compared to other small ten, twelve thousand person cities is the we have a almost a park system. Heck if we were any better organized around here, we'd call it a system. And, but we have a number of parks, and uh, as you add things like the disc golf, uh, the maintenance liability that comes, not liability, obligation that comes with that is pretty brutal. So the getting enough money into that access point over there at, uh, at the disc golf is always a, a fine-tuning because people have streets with street signs and names that require work and we're out there spending, you know, I have a work crew regrading that. So it's, it's in competition with other stuff. But we know it's, it's uh, all you got to do there is just drive by. And just almost any time the sun's out and it's not cold, you've got some, of the, some disc golf knuckleheads out there. It's amazing. They just, it continues to be a, a, a neat, low intensity recreational uh, thing. Really glad that. Heck, that was brought to us by volunteers, but I'm getting too far off the subject. But thanks for the compliment. Um, I want to say, if there's not another question, the, the, we're oversubscribed with freeze funds. Okay, so we need a flashing light or something. Not to be interpreted, these comments are not to be interpreted as either pro-free center or anti-free center. Just everybody step back. <sighs> But we're oversubscribed again this year. We, we got an initial uh, notification from the foundation. They get their, their notification of their income in December, and then we get an early idea of how much we'll have. Uh, that yeah, doesn't change much. So we'll have somewhere in the neighborhood of 450000 bucks. And I think we're, we have requested 500 and some, isn't that what you said? Correct. Really? Yeah, no, that good news is why we started out today. So we've got $100,000 more requested in funds <clears throat> than we, than we um, have dollars for this year. So, um, and, and, the, and people, back to this issue of whether well, it's a pro-freeze or anti-freeze center, it's, try not to be either one. But you'll see, everybody can be the judge as to whether these requests are important, whether they're the obvious next thing that we need to do to build our parks, our parks into a park system, or if in some people's mind, oh, this is a reach. You know, this proves that there's only $100,000 worth of legitimate freeze expenses. I think you probably see other, you know, you see people perhaps take positions on either side, but, you know, I, I don't, I'll ask Matt a question here. Um, what did we end up putting in for the dog park? Uh, 50,000. 
I, that's just not, we don't, you know, it's probably not enough. That's enough fence for an acre or so. It's not the biggest one you'll ever see, but it's, you know, it's a nice starter set. But it's not enough for restroom facilities or drinking fountains or any of that. So, um, you know, we had conversation about that. If that, if that, the dog park becomes something within the freeze advisory committee and then also within council because it goes uh, this Friday, Freeze Advisory Committee will make a first chance to figure out how to cut 100000 from $500,000 worth of requests or thereabouts. And then it'll go to, uh, back to Council Committee and then to Council. No wonder it takes all summer to get that money down. But anyways, that's, a, I think, the process that was put in place to make sure that there was plenty of outside input and there were good uh, checks and balances on a crazy, out-of-control mayor and... Uh, City Council and that uh, was the same same group at, in city government. But anyways, we've kept that in. Uh, there's good checks and balances, and uh, I don't believe anybody has run roughhouse. In fact, I'm going to digress a little bit. Sorry, wifey. Um, what has really been the the um, headlines of the past four or five years? You go back. Uh, we did a survey on what to do with freeze funds. Uh, uh, in anticipation of the money freeing up from paying the debt from the fiscal emergency nightmare. Okay, what we really worked off of that list, now I can't say it was absolutely slavishly mechanically uh, the top rated project got funded first, but we've done a pretty consistent job uh, of addressing, go back, no handicap restrooms. We kept hearing, we didn't keep hearing it. We saw that over and over in the service. You know what? They're right. There aren't, our, our public restrooms in the park leave a lot to be desired. So we, we went about this sort of systematic, again, about as systematic as it gets around here, of replacing those. So um, back to the dog park. If we, we go to uh, have Kobe Park move, from really a primitive, a, what I'd call primitive park, kind of a natural resource area, and that's being generous, to more of a park, I think we really have to have a, in our footprint, e either uh, year one to start it up, or certainly year two that we get bathrooms out there. I, you know, we, in our discussion internally, we talked, well, you could have porta pots. Yeah, you know, yeah, we could. And we have porta pots at the at the previously mentioned disc golf course. And there's a reason for that, um, but I think that's a less preferred alternative. So if I had to guess, sitting here on Monday, we will probably approve enough to get the dog park up and running, uh, and then start moving towards plans to have um, a more permanent restroom out there and live with porta pots in the meantime. So bring your canteen. I wouldn't want to drink in the res, nor would I want to put your dog drinking in the res. So I think that's on there as a kind of a front, uh, you know, something that comes to the forefront. So there'll be, there are other projects. I don't want to list them tonight, but um, <clears throat> what I think you'll see is that projects that have been discussed for a few years are finally getting their turn. Uh, it's there, uh, and the dog park would, would kind of fit into that. I'd also say that, that uh, exactly what gets approved at East Park falls into that same category. Uh, and, and whether it's uh, East Park's uh, baseball field or any other improvements out there. I think it's probably going to be the parking lot and, some, and, and a major step forward in the baseball field. So while we're out there. If you look at the paving list, combine the last two things, Pounder and Walnut right there by East Park are two of the ones that are, that are certainly uh, it's their turn. And our plan would be to just go ahead and pave the East Park parking lot while that contractor's in the neighborhood. So, uh, freeze is coming up. I think the fact that we're oversubscribed does speak to the fact that there are a lot of good projects out there. And so this uh, balancing act between the free center and other um, necessary, legitimate, obvious next step projects, um, I think that'll be part of the discussion. I think that'll be, that is part of the challenge in 
seeing whether we can sustain uh, the kind of freeze rec program that we've, you know, I've been doing this four or five years, so we're kind of getting used to it. I know we enjoy that up here at City Hall. And balancing between that and um, what I think many people argue could be a real major uh, project um, for the health and fitness, it's kind of funny coming out of, coming from me, but the health and fitness of people in Galleon, that's the whole purpose of that. And I get, you know, they roll their eyes and a lot of stuff I say, the group that is really fired up about the business development prospects, I kind of roll my eyes at that. I think if that happens, folks, that's really cool, but let's build a community center, rec center, that has the flexibility to be used as a regional um, attraction, but can um, can stand on its own as something cool for Galleon and, and those fitness-oriented people in Crawford County and the media Galleon area, so. All right, all right, all right. Got any questions? Uh, yeah, we got a whole bunch of them now. Okay, so, good. Uh, next one came, this is a follow-up from Curtis, but ties yeah. into the last couple of topics. Yeah. Uh, so taking a large chunk of freeze money for the freeze center, how will that affect keeping our current parts nice and up to date? Well, you know, whoa, whoa, but, uh, but. I mean, thank you. I take that as a compliment that they're nice and up to date. I think that's part of the balancing act. There was a little bit of a, oh, what I call inside baseball, kind of you have to know all of the issues uh, to really go back and talk about, but there was some social media stuff about how we use the uh, park and recreation fund that comes from um, a small portion of the income tax that, that folks pay. So it stretches that those funds uh, uh, to be able to do maintenance that is both labor maintenance and you got to buy stuff to fix broken stuff so that you know that budget's all already um, we, we've been able to fund one small project basically and keep repairs with that uh, that capital budget we also run the swimming pool through that that same source of funds and it's there's a medium-sized request for swimming pool improvements, some that carried over from the year of the COVID and some new ones that we'll again be talking about. Um, and, and I think that's part of the crux of the argument. Uh, it, is there enough money to be able to um, maintain the nice park facilities and then add on to them? And I'm talking about Oh, things like the uh, bathrooms, the uh, pavilions, the splash park, the, the new uh, playground in, in High Sea Park, tennis courts. There's a whole list. Somewhere I read, I don't know if it was, uh, I read today about the list of the projects that, that somebody was talking about, wanting to maintain those. They were concerned about, I think it really is in the questions that were asked through the surveys, which we haven't talked much about tonight. Maybe there's a question about that. So anyways, yeah, I think that's real important. Uh, that's a crux of the issue is how do we um, build something that, that meets the expectations, desires of the free center uh, advocates and still have enough money to, to do meaningful stuff. Um, you know, although kids age through the uh, splash park, you know, you're only out, you're only four or five once. By the time you get to be eight, you're kind of move or 10, you move on from that. Uh, I do think people get kind of bored, so we have uh, envisioned some more, um, uh, we're gonna need to replace that treatment plant, and there's probably the need to look at some more, uh, some more toys out of the splash park. So anyways, there's improving what we have, and then you'll see this year, again, a lot of safety improvements still need to be done, uh, particularly uh, at East Park and Pico. So anyway, that's a long, how's that for a long and rambling answer? But the main, that's a good question, and that is how do you balance both of those? Mm -hmm. It's a real challenge. It's a real challenge. Um, also, uh, a couple questions about... Oh, I know the projects. answer to that. I think you probably have to max out on state money and on, it may turn out that um, 
before this can be built that we're going to need a um, infusion of some private dollars. So uh, I know there are some folks in the wings waiting, some private donors. But uh, to answer the question, uh, you're gonna, that's gonna, we're gonna have to raise some money in the private sector, either through a large investor or a pool of, of uh, sort of traditional way that fundraising goes on with the, with people who are more successful in the community making tax, donations to a tax-free donation. So. All right, over answer. Thing. What else we got? A bunch of questions? Uh, yeah, a couple Please. questions about specific projects. This one came from Tammy. Uh, she says she likes the new bike path. Wanted to know, though, if uh, there are plans to add benches on it. Yeah, I think I think that those sorts of things, um, right, this is like human fundraiser. I'm gonna, I think one would really look, a nice bench would really look nice with a thing that said donated by the Kiwanis or donated by the Rotary or maybe uh, another organization. But yeah, I think uh, for the 65-year-old crowd, I think you probably need three sets of benches. And there's also, I think, I don't want to say the sky's the limit. That's too corny. But there are some other things that could be put out there that that uh, make sense. Uh, you know, we, we clearly need... Uh, Oh, a courtesy bag spot for the dogs, people who walk their dogs. What I see, the vast majority have bags with them, uh, but there's some people who, you know, the dog will uh, do their business accidentally. So I think we'll probably have some benches and one or two stations that somebody, if their dog does something stupid on the path, they can go walk conveniently back to that. Those are definitely improvements that are that are needed. I was out there over the weekend with seemed like half a galleon, but a lot of folks there. And, and I, I'm struck by some areas that need some trees to protect some of the, what I would describe as view shed, fancy word, of some of the closest neighbors. And then, it, you know, uh, those people have been out there, wow, what a, what a couple of, uh, of Johnny Apple seeds of the 21st century out there uh, sowing some uh, wildflower seeds. So. Uh, we're gonna. We'll probably do some things with the city to um, make it more a more natural area out there. But those are a couple of things. Tammy's idea: benches, uh, uh, doggy receptacles, poop receptacles, and um, you know maybe a little bit of um, of um, flowers and some plantings that would help with some of the visual things. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, then I had a question from Shirley. Uh, how much money will have to be paid back to the freeze fund each year, which then leaves less money for the parks? Three fifty. Three fifty. If you use that five million dollar number, that's about half of it is principal and half of it is interest. I don't think anybody's crazy about. If you could pay cash, we probably would. But the way it sorts out our our capacity, our financial capacity. It's going to cause us. It's going to make that five million be seven million. Uh, cool. Only cool part about that is that two million will be of interest will go back to the Freeze Foundation. So it's kind of funny. It's a. It's not a revolving loan exactly, but the the debt payments and the capital for those five million dollars worth of bonds will be three fifty a year, seven million dollars over the twenty years. Yeah, it's a lot of money. I think that, but, and, but let me, I don't want to be a smart aleck because I tend to, the trade off would be to have brought that principal way down. So just take the 5 million out of the 11, almost 12 million that's the endowment size. That had, that had a couple of different problems with it, some of them political. You know, you're going to take half the money out. Oh, I can't believe it. So, Part of that was solved by recharging the fund. Uh, and so it's not going to grow as fast as it might otherwise, uh, but it's going to be able to fund a large portion of this um, a pretty ambitious project. I'm, I'm hoping we can still pull it off because it's, um, it's uh, cooler than the last circus that came to town. 
it's you know it's it's hard to describe how much it can change um, uh, the recreational and the health and fitness stuff in town. You know, like I said ten minutes ago, if it if it causes other commercial activity to boom, then that's great. But that's not that's not why I've been interested in it for a handful of years. I've been interested in it for what it can do for young people in the community. And I'm not and I'm not just talking about travel sports. So that'll come up over the next couple of nights. Anyway. Go ahead, keep going. Okay. Uh, Cindy then had a couple of yeah. um, other topics here. Sure. Uh, first one is, are there plans for the vacant lot where the Eagle Crusher was formerly located on South Market Street? Yes. Yes. The, the We did a... What, everything gets bureaucratic. You wonder why you, how anybody can do this for 40 years. So, But bear with me. When you take over what's called a brown... You need a glossary. And we need that. We ought to put that up a glossary. So when I use the term like brownfield, some people don't know. So that's a brownfield. Take my word for it. Uh, meaning an old industrial area, um, old coal mine, old any kind of mining activity. Those would be brownfields. It's a brownfield site. So we did, there's really two rounds of investigation you need to do. A phase one, which we've completed. It took a long time. There's a, I think it's 120 pages. Come on up, and we'll let you. you can, we'll give you a copy. Um, um, the short of it is that there, because it's been an industrial site for many, many years, there are some uh, concern to air, some area of concern has to do with asbestos that may be in some of the concrete. So that's what phase one uncovered. Uh, next round is phase two. That's generally uh, tens of thousands. A lot of dollars to do the phase two. That's what was recommended. What we're going to do is try to seek some funding uh, to help us with the phase two. When that's done, our goal when we acquired it, when I go back, we acquired it through tax foreclosure. So it was sitting there. Everybody knows that. We kind of said we want it. We're going to try to turn it around, clean it up. So that's how the city acquired it. Don't have hardly any money in it yet. Skeptics here say, well, that's a good thing. But anyway, uh, so what, what is uh, our, our uh, objective would be to uh, divide it into a, a building lots, smaller lots. I don't think they need to be much more than an acre or so. Um, some people maybe are, I'm a fan of the house that was put in kind of on the old property at uh, Will McCraw. I don't know anything about it. I, I, I think it was manufactured, but now that it's there. And, um, so what we hope is that there'll be uh, housing lots developed that people will either put single family, that'd be my preference, either stick built, you know, from a set of blueprints or manufactured homes um, on those sites so we have some affordable housing along there. There is the outside chance, Matt's like, oh God, yeah, I am going to go ahead and go into this. The If the Amtrak train, which that's another portion of the people watching tonight or that, that hear about what the mayor said, um, you know, it may come on the tracks. If Galleon can uh, secure a stop on a proposed Amtrak train from, the, you know, along the 3C. Um, don't want to disappoint fans of the big four. Heck, we've done a lot over there, but it is likely that the stop would be down there near Pershing. So it may turn out if those things fall in place. Hell, heck, they're talking about $3 trillion for infrastructure. It's like, wow, okay. Well, that might be some passenger rail. If that were to happen, uh, I really... Um, It'd be kind of interesting. It's not why we acquired it, acquired it for housing, but we might be able to, uh, that might help Galleon secure that stop. Um, and that's a whole nother conversation about railroad uh, uh, traffic and, and why uh, the railroad strongly prefer uh, being south down there on Pershing. South as in south of the big four, so I'll stop with that. But. Cindy, the, the, what we want to do is put housing on it. 
we're phase one, we're through that. It's identified the need for a phase two environmental. Uh, we're gonna get some assistance on outside funding, get that done, and um, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that the, the biggest constraint to Galleon's growth in terms of population, which kind of erode, still eroding a little, is the lack of, uh, of construction sites for new homes. Uh, and so that's kind of what I see the city's role is to set the table, get some lots acquired and go from there. So that's South Market. Okay, and then uh, Cindy's other question was, will there be third Fridays this year? Yeah, I think so. We're, you know, it's, it's funny uh, in a ha-ha way. We've got two projects that we're going to have to coordinate their timing of. Uh, talked, I believe it was last week, about the long-awaited. We've certainly plugged away a little bit at a time, we being the people that have worked on the depot renovation. Uh, but it looks like that project is going to take a big step forward. And so the, so on the inside of the depot, um, there will be a lot of construction. Um, at the same time, hopefully not exactly the same time, we are going to work on the plans to rebuild the uh, Park Square, which Cindy and others, people who are Third Friday folks, uh, know for the most part takes, takes uh, place up there. So we had just an initial conversation with the chamber about that. I, what we're going to try to do likely is use uh, down on Washington Street or on that um, little courtyard, it's not really a courtyard, railroad yard, the green space, whatever the heck you want to call it, uh, as improvising, if you will, for Third Friday uh, while we do the stuff uptown. The other side of it is that if we have a the grant is 100000 bucks. so people who do much construction or have had anything done on their house, you know, well, I won't go very far. And we don't expect it to, you know, um, it's not going to have flashing lights and, you know, turn, every, turn everybody's life around. But it will be a pretty cool place. So I, it, the other way, the other thing we're looking at is maybe go ahead with June, July, and August. Uh, and the second, the August, uh, uh, third Friday is done. You know, we would would not have a September one, regardless of the weather. As soon as that's done, we'd start the project. If we do it that way, Sydney, then we would we would do all the design work. We would select the contractor. They'd be sitting there ready to go. And third Friday, Friday nights over, Monday, Tuesday morning, the contractor would come in, and we would have you know on into November to finish that up. So you begin to see. Um, it, it begins to give us an idea of which projects we're going to need to do first on the square. So we aren't, you know, there's a lot of folks that want to put a mural up there. Maybe I'm the only one. I'm a lot of folks. But you hear a lot about that. I think there's some great potential when the when that park, or excuse me, when the square was first put, gazebo and all that stuff was first put in. There was the goal, the, the hope that they could have a, a mural then and the just funds just didn't allow that to happen. So... <clears throat> You know, that might be one of the first things that happen. And, you know, uh, conceivably, you could have a third Fridays and just keep people, um, you know, away from and maybe not paint on, you know, to have it under uh, development. So, here I do it every week, over answer. We're going to balance between the depot that's going to have renovation and the square and try to get those two projects in this year, so. Uh, we won't, meaning the city, will certainly do everything we can. I think I already saw the picnic tables up there, so somebody is. So we're we're getting ready uh, to uh, be set to accommodate Third Fridays, even though we're a couple months away. So, all right. Okay, and then we had a couple of folks um, asking, going back to the free center. Yeah. Uh, just trying to get clarification on how the debt. Of three hundred thousand per year or so gets paid back. Where does that funding source come from? Yes, yeah, it, it's. I kind of like the structure. You'll see all if it if it works. You'll see all kinds of people crowding the lens for the. These are the people who design this. But uh, I kind of like it. I the parts of it I'll take credit for. Blame if it goes if it goes uh, south. Um, 
<clears throat> Every year, so what will happen is that instead of liquidating the foundation funds, they have, they're mostly invested in the stock market and a range of stuff. What the foundation would agree to do is to buy $5 million worth of debt that the Port Authority would issue. Th that debt would be then guaranteed by the city. So we would guarantee to take our income that comes from the Freeze Foundation. I described it early as 545000 this year. Is that right? Uh, four, four, oh, five. whoops. There I go again. 500000 is what's requested. We're going to get about 445000 and it's typical if you can make that statement off of, say, five years' history. It's out of that money that the city would guarantee to pay the Freeze Foundation that $350,000 I mentioned before. Half of it for interest on the $5 million and half of it to pay down the debt over a 20-year period. So the money comes from the income, the proceeds from the foundation, which will have five million dollars invested in these bonds and the other let's say seven or eight million invested in the market so those that's where some of the safeguards will would need to be built in will be built in because if that other part of the foundation that seven million has a really bad year or two then the amount of income from the foundation could get pretty close to 350000 So that's kind of where the money comes from is off the annual income that a $12 million foundation generates. Um, the, this foundation, if they, it turns out every, we can do it legally and when we get to that point, this foundation will get part of its money from the payment back from a previous uh, bond issue they invested in. I can't. I'm, give me a day or two, I'll come up with a really neat analogy. It could be something other than. It could be uh, that same sort of thing on a brand new swimming pool, which it looks like we don't need, by the way. But anyway, so I hope that, I hope that answers the question. If it doesn't, kind of come back around. The income to pay the bonds is the income the city gets off of that foundation. As a beneficiary. Okay, thanks, Mayor. Uh, next question came from Stephen, also related to the Free Center. Uh, if, when and if the project is able to move forward, is there a rough timeline for completion? How many years out? Well, you know, it it um, you can lose a season if you lose a few months. So I, I'm, I'm going to avoid that answer. The, what, um, what the hopes are is to start it in the spring after it dries out so you get a first year construction uh, um, season. And that, that would then be under roof, if you just bear with me, and non a contract, under roof by the fall, uh, finished up during the winter, all the indoor work uh, done then, the flooring and such, and then open by that next fall. So a little over a year from uh, the time you started to the time it opened. So it kind of depends on, on um, when these funds get put together. I know some of the emotion, some of the disappointment stuff that uh, flared up over the past month uh, came from the hope to be able to get started this year uh, and you know I, I, I think it's turning out everyone even the, the most fervent uh, advocates are realizing uh, you know you're just gonna have to time it up when the when the funds are raised so a little over a year in construction um, and, I, and I hope that answers the question a little bit of a timeline you know there may be a question tonight there'll be a question tomorrow for, for certain about construction costs. Uh, we Everyone has heard about, uh, you know, if you went to buy a piece of plywood, you've learned about the increased cost in lumber price. So everybody knows that that's true of building materials when it comes to lumber and wood products. It appears, um, 
you know, everybody's checking that. Everybody wants to, to know about that. It's the prices have gone up, but it's the lead time that seems to be more confounding. So it's there's a, a four month to six month lead time on receiving the materials once the order's put down. So that will affect the schedule back to the original question as much as the cost. So a little over a year in construction for it to time up optimally to get it done uh, according to the calendar and then get open in time for um, you know a season uh, beginning you know in the in the summer fall you have I, I think I'm not a soccer player but you have some fall soccer you have the high school soccer and a lot of youth stuff and then on the gym side you've got uh, volleyball starting up on the interscholastic side not the on the travel side but on the youth side and then basketball right around the corner so all right all right all right about a little over a year and uh they won't it won't get started until the funds get raised so oh, how's that for a, for a really obvious sort of stupid answer sorry what else we got uh those are all the questions i had okay good I think uh, appreciate the people being on. We, yeah, we've had enough fun. It's about nine o'clock. Uh, you know, and and I encourage people to uh, be involved. I don't think I have to do that. It's like encourage people to be involved. And then when a bunch of people are involved, so yeah, aren't you? Know, aren't you glad I encourage people? No, I think I think people are engaged. I'm gonna make two other comments about the survey because I was for three weeks now. I was gonna talk just about the survey. And, not gotten around to it for different reasons. Some, some interesting things that I found in the survey, I'll make it real quick. The people came in over the internet. This is assumption number one, you know, that what they told you in middle school. It had to be a teacher that told you about, you know, what assume means. But I'm assuming that the people who came in early and came in through the internet, those, those are probably younger participants, people who heard about it, they're engaged in it, not somebody who said, where is this thing? I don't even know where it's at, which is a legitimate question. If you don't know, you don't know. Um, those were strongly in favor, and uh, gosh, a little over half, I think, of the total, 500 and something. And there were some 300 and some that came in on the sheet of paper that we sent you out. We sent out 6,000 of them, we got 300 back, not complaining just kind of a total. Um, so what it tells me is that 800 roughly is the, is the number of responses. There's a generational split because the ones that came in through, this, through snail mail, the, the numbers weren't totally reversed, but more people were against it than for it, in, or either against it or uncertain than were for it in the ones that were mailed in, okay? little empathy for any city council member, any local official in Galleon that intends to run uh, this fall. A little empathy, all I'm asking. So uh, advocates are passionate about this and really demanding an, an answer. I think folks have to realize the situation that council members are in. They got eight, there'll be about 2,000 folks vote this fall, which is a whole other subject about how participation in municipals and participation last November is like, wow, two different pools of voters. Like, yeah, it really is. Of the people who are going to vote this fall, those 800 people are less than half of them. So the not that, um, that every vote a council member makes is based on the election, but come on, a little empathy. They... I think for the most part, these ladies and gentlemen like their jobs. And they don't want to, uh, you know, they want to be cautious about taking a vote, which will, you find out it's close to 12 million bucks, the project, when you add everything in. They want to be cautious about that 12 million. So I think a little empathy, a little time for folks to sort it out so that um, their questions are answered and, primarily that uh, the seven people on council's questions are answered. I know that sounds kind of crappy, but this really, 
neat what the chamber did, get all the business uh, feedback. That was a good, those were two good uh, Q&A sessions. Um, but right now what the port uh, is faced with and advocates for the project are faced with is convincing five, six people. And so I hope that's what we do uh, tomorrow night is have questions by those seven members of council that can help them make up their minds and, and get this uh, decision made. So back to the, the previous question, when's this going to start so we know when it can finish? Uh, you know, that, th that decision can be made. So with all that having been said, um, I told Matt when I got here, I didn't, I, it's like, wow, I'm just sort of tired, don't have any energy, but here we are an hour later. Enjoyed the time. Thank you for the questions. It, it uh, keeps me uh, energized and uh, enjoying being the mayor. So thanks a lot. We'll talk to you next week. Actually, you'll hear more from me. It'll be a bad Tuesday and Wednesday if you hear too much more of this voice. Hopefully you'll hear a much more of the council and Port Authority members the next two nights. So with that being said, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow and Wednesday night. Good night.